All right, thank you very much. Great experiences there shared in the work that's going on in China, in India, and in Indonesia. We now transition to our final session for the day. Thank you. Yes. So there is a change in our panelists, speakers for this final session. It's different from what we have on our formal program. And I will have the pleasure to introduce them to us as our distinguished panel for our fourth and closing session for day one. It's our pleasure to welcome up Dr. Sabine Mueller, who is Director General for the Sectoral Department at GIZ in Germany. Dr. Mueller, if you could join us up on the podium, please. Joining her on stage is Enrique Maruri, who is the director for the South to South and Triangular Corporation Bureau, Presidential Agency for Development Corporation, APC Colombia. Welcome up. And our third speaker for this session is Alphonsus Omwel Mecca, Director of Agriculture Extension from the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development in Nigeria. If you could join us, sir, up on stage. Thank you. And our moderator for this final session is Abba Joshi Ghani, who is Director of Client Services, Leadership, Learning, and Innovation here at the World Bank. And she will lead this session for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tweedy. I'm very, very pleased to have, um, firstly, I'm sure you are pleased to have eventually a final session for the day, because I know it has been very long, and although a very stimulating discussion today, but a lot of you have traveled um, from far and wide, and I'm sure jet lag and, and tiredness is sitting in. But nevertheless, we have a sparkling panel here and a, and a good discussion on, on how do we wrap up, actually, um, today's uh, lessons learned and, and, and um, key insights and what do we take forward. So I know our, our panelists have already been introduced. We have uh, Dr. Sabine Mueller, uh, DG for Sectoral Department from GIZ. Welcome, Sabine. And we have Enrique Maruri, Director, International Cooperation, Presidential Agency for Development Cooperation Colombia. Welcome, Enrique. And we have, um, of course, uh, Alphonsus uh, uh, Onwu Meka, Director of Agriculture Extension, uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, Nigeria. So um, we have about um, 35 to 40 minutes for our discussion today. And I really wanted to start off with a broad question and have each one of you actually um, address that. And we could actually go um, in a straight line if we want, starting from Sabine. And um, so today we heard, I mean, we had many sessions, but we also had a fantastic um, keynote speech from uh, Jean-Claude Monet from Microsoft, who really emphasized on um, the import, you know, the only way that, a, that an organization can focus on knowledge management and be uh, good about knowledge facilitation and learning is uh, firstly, if you have um, a vision, a strategy, and then most importantly, a culture. So it just boils down to uh, the people. And, and how do we create that culture? 
from what you've heard today, I wanted to hear from each one of you, what are the insights that you have gained for your own work? Uh, what resonated with you? Um, and what sort of uh, lessons um, would you take back or want to amplify from here? So starting with you, Sabine. Okay, thank you very much. First of all, thanks for inviting me to this session and having the opportunity really to make some concluding remarks um, after this very inspiring sessions with very distinguished panelists. So um, I think I take a lot with me. I learned a lot and it's quite difficult really to answer. But I, I might start and I think, I think others will follow. I found in the, in the morning this, this aspect of culture very really important. Uh, and I think what we heard today also confirmed that knowledge sharing really can, can be a driver for getting solutions faster and more effectively. And this was really a confirmation from the private sector, but also from the public sector. So we are really on the right track, I would say so. And it could even save lives. So I think this, this was one important um, insight. And the second one, the question of culture, that also confirms my own experience in my own organization because it's very important that you have people there who are ready to listen, who are ready to learn, who are ready to pool their knowledge to gain, to, to hear from others and then together really to create something new, something. Because the aspect of co-creation, we have also knowledge sharing, but sharing knowledge also brings new knowledge. And this, I think, is also a, a very important insight. And we learned also a lot about the obstacles sometimes which could occur. I remember that one of the ministers said governments tend to be very protective with knowledge. That's true, but it's not only true for governments. I think it's true for everybody. And there comes in the motivation. And, and I think there has to be a motivation really to share knowledge. And one, when do you have a motivation? I think you have a motivation when there is a common objective, there's a common uh, problem you want to resolve. If all the participants in the knowledge sharing exp uh, experience have an interest in, in a solution and, and finding a solution, so then I think there's a motivation. But maybe that will not be enough. You heard something also about incentive systems, and I think this is also very important to think uh, in the uh, incentive system really to motivate people to share their information and also to listen. I think for the moment, I will go. Okay, so, um, well, f first of all, thank you for for the inviting me to this session. I mean, I was not uh, initially planned to be in this session, but I was asked to to join you. So, um, my main takeaways is uh, well, the first one is that I I see that the knowledge knowledge is now really. Uh, a priority for the development agenda. I mean, I was I was participating and I was in charge of organizing the the high level meeting in Bogota, the one that Kyle Peters mentioned in the in the initial remarks. And for that time, you know, it was something very new. Now I see that knowledge is really uh, a priority for the development agenda, and that's that's an important point. I mean. Um, after six years, I see that there is momentum for knowledge sharing, uh, in, and it's not an agenda just uh, pushed by a few people, but uh, there is a growing community, and, 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 and that's an important element. Um, the other thing, um, uh, what is the type of knowledge that people want to share, that, that uh, the development community want to share? Um, it's not about methods, it, it's not about models, it's, it's more about uh, practical, the tacit knowledge. I, I've heard uh, many people talking about tacit knowledge. I remember f five years ago talking about tacit no What is tacit? Now, that, you know, there, there is people understanding this, and that's important. It's practical knowledge. It's, it's, it's knowledge on how to do things. It's not, it's not uh, a Bibles or a books. Or not. It's about, it's about um, practical things, how to do things, how to uh, overcome uh, challenges, how to um, address uh, the, the SDGs, for instance. Um, 
knowledge is relevant for several sectors. I mean, what uh, we have listened this afternoon is that uh, knowledge sharing is important for health, for uh, entrepreneurship, for agriculture, for education. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, an, it's a common agenda for, um, and it's, it's, it's important for many areas. I mean, there is not a specific area where knowledge is important and not in other areas. There is not a right way to share knowledge. And I think that's another important thing. But there are, there, there are some principles, some behaviors, some capacities. Um, there, is, there is a need for a culture uh, to share knowledge. So, so there is not the right way, but uh, there are elements that need to be considered if we want to have an effective knowledge sharing process. Um, knowledge sharing is about change and innovation, doing things differently mobilizing change agents and, and getting out of the comfort area. Um, and that, that is important, that's part of the culture, you know, is doing things differently. And it's not easy because people prefer to do things as they know how to do it. But um, this agenda is important if we are open to do things in a different way, to change. Even if we make mistakes, we need to do things differently. And finally, um, uh, um, knowledge sharing, we have heard about uh, sharing knowledge at the international level. Of course, uh, this is, we are part of the international community. But um, I have uh, heard uh, this afternoon the importance of knowledge sharing at the national level um, among regions uh, within one country. And this is actually happening in Colombia, in countries like Colombia, like India, like Indonesia, uh, um, where we have different regions with different levels of development. Uh, knowledge sharing is an important tool. And I'm seeing this in my organization, you know. Now we have what we call call, call knowledge sharing. Call because Colombia. But it's, it's knowledge sharing among uh, regions among uh, institutions within uh, the same country. So this is an important thing, and I think there is a need to push for this uh, uh, at the national level. So these are my main takeaways. Great. Thank you very much, Enrique. Good insights. Alfonso. Thank you, uh, Moderator. Uh, for me, from all the presentations this morning, it's very clear that uh, without knowledge sharing, we can never change uh, failure stories to success stories. As know how we can improve on productivity, predictability, and quality of our services and products. So for good uh, results and efficient service delivery, it has become apparent that we must continue to break the silos of knowledge. And in doing so, there is need for partnership, partnerships horizontally Vertically, as my colleague said, even within ministries, within states, the federal government, for those who have that structure, in Nigeria we have three tier government, federal government, state government, and local government. That should be that uh, system put in place. And we need, uh, I heard from, even from the experience uh, we have, where we have a problem, similar problem with Ethiopia. Ethiopia was able to solve this, but we couldn't because there was no knowledge sharing. And the highest also support the need for a platform for all donor supported projects. We can even start with World Bank projects, have a platform where all the success stories and challenges can be shared. From there, we can now learn how to solve those challenges. Uh, I also believe that uh, we need to invest seriously in capacity building, training and retraining. That's the only way we can sustain knowledge sharing program. This is very, very important. So this is what happened so far. Thank you, Alfonso. So we, we heard from you about how knowledge sharing can actually convert failure to success. So it's really learning from, um, uh, learning from lessons of uh, when, when we've actually failed in order to then capture that in order to, to succeed. 
talking about breaking silos. And I'm, I'm repeating these also because um, I think these are very important for any institution. At the World Bank, we also talk about exactly the same things, and I'm sure at GIZ as well. Um, and then, you know, how do we, uh, how do we share uh, knowledge between different um, platforms? And then Enrique emphasized that, you know, it's not only within an institution, but across, uh, you know, within the country. How do you take knowledge from one part of the country to another in order to, to raise that capacity? Um, and that it requires change, ag uh, change agents and, and innovation. And of course, they're being talked about um, to be ready to listen and to learn and about the whole um, culture. But we also here talked about investing in knowledge and building that capacity. Um, I wanted to put another question back to you, just in, in very general terms. Um, how would you measure in your own organization whether um, knowledge flow or knowledge facilitation is succeeding. I mean, these can be tangible ways of knowing, or they could be absolutely intangible, tacit ways of knowing. Um, so, uh, Sabine, how would you define that? Okay, I know in GIZ we are sharing knowledge and it is having an, an impact. Here. This is really a difficult question <laughs> because, and actually, I was at the table at, um, at the coffee table, and we had actually this monitoring and evaluation right. <laughs> issue, and we discussed uh, how do you measure the impact of knowledge, yeah. knowledge sharing? No, because and and we discussed a little bit. Okay, what should be the outcome of knowledge sharing? First of all, I think you think what 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 is what you want to achieve? No. Uh, want you do you want to have new solu solutions or faster solutions or to know more or, or you want to to need uh, or, or, or what but what what's the, what are really the benefits of of knowledge sharing and I would say because what happens now at GSZ, we are working all over the world in a decentralized way in different countries, projects, and so on. And in all the projects, we are making experiences, learning, uh, finding solutions together with our partners. And, and it's really difficult to bring these insights together back to headquarters and then to use it, to mainstream it, and to use it also to produce new new solutions, new ideas, etc., and to be more efficient. And I would measure, really, if we would be more efficient in this thing, that is just sometimes casualty, that I'm visiting a country, a project, and think, oh, that looks very interesting, what you're doing there. But, but there, there, there has to be a process, mm -hmm. a systematic process, that this kind of innovation we have all over the world, together with our partners, that just comes back and is, is really processed and is presented and is used again. Now, so this is, I think, the important thing. And that's that so knowledge could be made available and could be processed and could be uh, further developed and I think we would be much more efficient. We are on this way, but we have still a, lo uh, a long way to go. This is one uh, step. And then the other is also within the different units and with, uh, between sectors. We, we discussed this also that, uh, during the afternoon, so that there has been a, a horizontal yeah. knowledge sharing. Because there's a, a governance project, yes. But the governance project has also something to do with maybe um, employment. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this separation between sectors has also been broken. You know? So really to share the information and to be open. And if I'm working in a, a natural resource project that I think, OK, there are also governance aspects, there are employment aspects. And I have to share this information with the employment people, with the natural resource people, with the governance people, and vice versa. So this would also be a, an indicator for me that this really works automatically. It works, but not always automatically. Yeah. Thank you, Sabine. Hendrik. Well, the, the thing is that tomorrow I have to speak. So <laughs> if I say all, every, all the things that I Don't think say about all this, the things. Just then I won't preview. have <laughs> things to say tomorrow. But um, still, I'm going to try to make some, sure. some uh, openings for my <laughs> intervention tomorrow. So, so uh, I will say if, if we want to have uh, 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 impact, we need to develop 
tools, mm -hmm. practical tools. We need to develop a monitoring and evaluation framework, which is different to a monitoring and evaluation framework from another uh, development project. I mean, we need, we need to develop a, a specific monitoring and evaluation framework. And in this specific sense, um, I would like to highlight what the Ibero-American programs for South-South cooperation is doing in our region because uh, through this program we are develop a, developing a common agenda for monitoring and evaluating South-South cooperation. In our region, South-South cooperation is about is basically knowledge sharing because we don't do um, uh, infrastructure projects through South-South cooperation in our region in our in Latin America. Uh, basically, um, no, uh, South South cooperation is more about is, is knowledge sharing. So, uh, monitoring and evaluation models. Right now, there is not a, a, um, um, a monitoring and evaluation model uh, implemented, mm -hmm. fully implemented. I mean, I, I, I know about the Brazil's uh, experience, I know Chile is doing some things. And Colombia is also developing its own model. And um, tomorrow I'm gonna make a, a brief presentation of what we are doing. But I think um, um, today uh, people is aware of the importance of developing a, a framework for uh, measuring uh, not only the results, yeah. but the outcomes. Yeah. Um, and I'm, but, I, but beyond that, I. I know that uh, the things that we are doing through South-South cooperation and through knowledge sharing uh, are, are, are generating important and positive impacts. I mean, I know about uh, entrepreneurship in, in the Central American region, for instance. Um, it's an important thing that is happening and is, is supported by the Colombian government through uh, knowledge sharing. Yeah. You know, we are basically uh, transferring our experience, what we have learned the good things and the bad things yeah. to the Central American countries, and they ha they are developing their own entrepreneurship uh, environment, uh, learning from our experience, yeah. and and now they they have policies very very much inspired in what we have done, and in, an interesting thing uh, is that GIZ have uh, is aware of this, and now they are supporting this initiative. Uh, so I would say uh, developing a framework. Um, um, and also, um, you know, uh, developing capacities. I mean, people, um, um, if people, if this community is, is more aware of the importance of knowledge sharing, they will have more interest in, in showing the results, in showing the outcomes, in explaining what we have uh, uh, gained from uh, implementing our projects. Thank you, Enrique. Alfonso. Uh, thank you. Uh, for me, I do with FAMAS and the uh, they are mostly rural farmers, yeah. uh, and these rural farmers produce up to 70 percent of the food we eat in Nigeria. So for us, uh, from beginning, the outcomes uh, were clearly spelled out as the productivity of the farmer, the income, and uh, through knowledge sharing, a lot have achieved in this area. For instance, the uh, the failure story was the fertilizer subsidy, for instance, mm -hmm. that uh, 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 found its way to middlemen. Only 11% of the farmers benefited from the subsidy, so-called subsidy. But with the introduction of growth enhancement scheme, which is an innovation uh, aimed at uh, uh, supporting farmers with inputs through e-wallet system. This is an e electronic wallet system. And that really has helped to, solve, to transfer that failure story now to success story of farmers having access to this improved, especially fertilizer and seeds. Mm -hmm. I know seeds alone contribute up to 50% of the productivity we expect farmers to have. And uh, that's what drives also the efficiency of fertilizer and other inputs. Uh, so that is being uh, solved now. Uh, with uh, proper adequate funding, that innovation can help to, continue to solve that problem. And uh, again, through knowledge sharing too, uh, among the farmers themselves, because uh, with the help of the World Bank, not only uh, are the focal officers have been trained, we also have facilitators among these focal officers who now go to the villages 
and help the farmers to share among themselves, even among the facilitators of farmers. And now farmers are now able to be able to differentiate between fake and genuine seeds, and they're able to uh, differentiate between fake and genuine fertilizer. A lot of fertilizer you see in the market are not, not really fertilizer. You see uh, NPK, 15, 15, 15, what is contained may be NPK 555. They have been told to educate uh, on how to do this, and uh, it's helping now. To, uh, and that is telling on their productivity. You know, uh, what used to be uh, low yield uh, achieved by farmers have now increased for rice, for maize, for most of the staple crops. So it's, uh, it's something that is welcome. And we thank the World Bank for that, really. And uh, not that uh, knowledge sharing has not been there all along. But uh, it has not been uh, uh, given more impetus. I would think I we're happy with that. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Alphonsus. So I, my last question is, this is going to be an easy one, since I've been you complained that that was a hard one, is just very quickly, um, what did you uh, not see discussed today, which you think is important? so that, you know, Stefan promises me that it can be included in the program tomorrow. So just anything which comes to you, you know, I, I really wanted to hear about that, but I didn't see it discussed today. I mean, any big gaps or big needs that you want on the program tomorrow? I'm not really, not sure if there have been gaps, but I think there are some issues which could be uh, emphasized or where, where it could be a more um, intensify, intensive uh, discussion. And first of all, I think to I think a little more about the circumstances which are needed so that knowledge sharing can work very well. Mm -hmm. I will give you an example because tomorrow's uh, one colleague uh, will, ex uh, um, will um, present an example of the Alliance for Financial Inclusion. This is a very um, successful South-South cooperation and has been in, um, um, supported by, by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and GIZ. And, and there you can see really what kind of circumstances are necessary or are helpful so that the knowledge sharing can work very well. That is a common goal, a common interest. That there are solutions on the table, which could be developed, you know, that there, uh, so that there are stakeholders with, with a lot of motivation, you now and so on. So they, I think it's very important to see when can it work and when can it not work. Because if you are in a very competitive environment, uh, you can you can really invest in knowledge sharing, but it might not work. So I think it's very important to look in this in these conditions, and then. I think knowledge sharing is is much more than the knowledge transfer. We talked about this today. So there, there are no blueprints you're transferring from one country to, to the other. So you have to adapt and to the different circumstances and also to create something new. This, this issue of co-creation also, uh, I think it's also discussed a lot now with the Agenda 2020. Uh, 30, so multi-stakeholder partnerships really to, to create added value through knowledge sharing you know, and, and innovation. So I think this is also what, what could be emphasized. And then I think when we talk about knowledge sharing, we think a lot about South-South cooperation, but I think the, the learning experience, we are all in it. You know? I think we, we as, uh, as development partners are also part of the learning Exercise. No, so we learn all together, and and I think we we share our knowledge, and I think this is also also important. And then, what has been said about uh, tacit knowledge and implicit knowledge, for us at least, it's still a, ch a challenge. No, because especially when it when it uh, deals with implementation knowledge, uh, how to implement good projects. So normally, this is in the head of the people who are implementing the projects, and it's sometimes very difficult to codify. And, and to present. No? I think this is a challenge, the tacit knowledge. So this, I think, um, and then I come to the last aspect because as we are also part of the GDI, of the Global Delivery Initiative, where exactly we talk about that, no? about uh, the, the science of delivery 
and I, I actually I'm not sure how these two um, two initiatives now the the knowledge partnership and the global delivery initiative how they are how they are linked because I think there there are a lot of issues in both initiatives which which uh, have be, have to be tackled and and maybe the uh, linking the two initiatives could be very useful. Excellent. Thank you, Sabine. Enrique. Well, in my case, um, I would like to hear a bit, uh, uh, a lot more about the role of the change uh, agents um, or the change leaders, because if if the focus is on knowledge, uh, on tacit knowledge, then the owners of this knowledge are the change leaders mm -hmm. or the change agents in in the World Bank's language. So, so um, I think it's very important to. Um, um, work more on, on, on this, what is their role, and how to extract this, because if they have the knowledge, they don't know how to share knowledge. Mm -hmm. So how to extract this knowledge from these people, how to uh, get, uh, um, how to cultivate these leaderships, and, and help these people to share this knowledge, because it's, it's people, yeah. um, uh, they are the owners of the knowledge. The other thing is um, country leadership. Uh, especially talking in a scenario like this, led by a multilateral organization. You know, countries, and I represent a country, we always said countries need to be the, uh, uh, you know, at the front of the, sh of the sharing process. There is a need for country leadership, and I fully agree. But what does it mean? What is country leadership? Um, what, 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 what is the role that uh, 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 country institutions should play? Um, so um, I think it's important to, to define it. What are the practical things that need, that, that need to be done to ensure that there is country leadership? Um, um, and, and in this sense, uh, and, and it's very linked to, to this, is um, how to um, get uh, leaders, uh, politicians, mm -hmm. uh, uh, decision makers engaged in this agenda. Uh, I'm very happy, for instance, in my case, to see that we have representatives from the planning department, the Ministry of Planning in Colombia, because they are the one leading. So uh, it's important for them to get aware of this, of this agenda. But we need to uh, really define concrete steps to uh, ensure that uh, countries uh, lead the knowledge sharing processes. And especially if, and if, if uh, facilities or mechanisms or uh, funds are created to promote south-south uh, cooperation or knowledge sharing, we need to be sure that uh, uh, the, the tools, uh, the key elements um, uh, to, to ensure country leadership are there. Are there. And finally, um, um, I think there is, there is a need for more uh, conversation about the uh, tools. Uh, for effective knowledge sharing. What are the tools and mechanisms uh, for uh, sharing uh, knowledge in an effective way? Because I think the World Bank has done an, a great work, you know, this art of knowledge sharing is, is, is a very uh, used uh, document in my, in my institutions. I mean, it's like our Bible, on, honestly. I say that there is not a Bible, but we use it a lot. We use it a lot. But we need, to use, we need to adapt it to our uh, country uh, um, context. So um, I think um, now there is a need for understanding what are the tools that countries are using for knowledge sharing and how to uh, adapt it and how to improve it, not replacing it with, with the World Bank uh, mechanism, with, with World Bank tools. Yeah. But enriching it with the experience of this of the of the of this uh, process. I mean, with, of this institution. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, but thank you. Uh, I heard um, that not all social development programs can be adopted by uh, by all because of limitations in funding, a political will, and culture. I have not heard how to address all this. And they talk about tools. Uh, in supporting some uh, poor uh, countries in this uh, area, knowledge sharing, uh, the platforms at times uh, can be developed, but not hosted. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 facilities required, not there. 
And I just wonder why you support should stop without uh, uh, following it to the conclusive end. That means if World Bank stops at a stage, and that developed partner should come in. So that uh, uh, collaboration among donor partners uh, is what I would really want to hear how it can be addressed so that support in such a way can be concluded and the results, expected results achieved. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. So I think we, we got some uh, really nice crystallized ideas um, from our panelists today. I think they, they confirmed firstly that culture, incentives, outcomes matter. It's important for knowledge to flow across silos, um, across the country and, um, and, and between various levels of government. That m &E is difficult, I too agree with that, <laughs> so we, It's hard to find something palpable and say that, yes, we know we are succeeding. I just wanted to say, um, yesterday I was talking to somebody who said, a good knowledge management is really like a good train ride. You don't remember anything about it, which is it's easy to access, it's easy to use, and it is, uh, it is just easy to then reuse and flow it back into the system. It is so seamless, but how do we measure that? But yet, I think Enrique is gonna talk about M&E tomorrow, and, and he did say that you know, we, we need frameworks and we need a way to, to quantify what is happening and what is working. And then Alphonsus gave us a very good example of you know, where it is kind of more tangible. So when we're looking at outputs, so you know, learning from lessons and sharing that knowledge, if it, if it means that fertilizer subsidies are bad and you can increase yields in other ways through seeds and other things, then bringing that knowledge, that solution actually works. Um, what I heard, and Stefan, this is a long agenda for you for tomorrow to ensure that we want to hear more about, um, you know, uh, how is knowledge co-created? Not, it's, it's, it's not just flowing, but how, how are we co-creating it? How are we developing it? Um, what are we learning from knowledge? So knowledge and learning being together, and, and, and that's, that's a good way to, un to, to have knowledge sharing when there is learning coming out of that. Uh, leadership. Leadership is very important, right at the highest level. That's also something we learned this morning, but I think it's different to talk about leadership in an institution and where knowledge rests and what is the authorizing environment, but when we're talking about a whole country, then the leadership has to come very much from the top, from, uh, uh, from the president, the prime minister, um, the, minis the ministers themselves. So it has to be in the whole um, political fabric of uh, country. We want to hear more about tacit knowledge tomorrow. Um, tacit, as the word implies, is, is hard to, is not revealed. So let's see if we can reveal that a bit more tomorrow. Um, and then, of course, um, tools, but not just tools which can be universally applied, but how do we adapt these tools to our own circumstances and therefore, in a way, co-create knowledge going forward. I'd like to um, thank all our three panelists, Sabine, Enrique, Alphonsus, and all of you today for um, making this a fantastic day. The first day sets the tone for the second day, so I hope that you will be here tomorrow and will participate um, fully, and I would like to um, thank the organizing team for working so hard. Thank you, and have a great evening. Thank you. Just to guide us on how we will be wrapping up our day, you are all warmly welcome back to the atrium where there is a buffet and an opportunity for us to informally network and connect with one another. The atrium is where we had the Knowledge Cafe exercise earlier uh, during our lunch break. So we welcome you warmly. Please to make your way towards the atrium where our buffet and an opportunity to network with one another is available. Tomorrow morning, we convene for breakfast uh, from 8 to 9 a.m. And then we formally begin our sessions at 9 a.m. Please remember to vote while we are at the atrium. We had the poster contest. Please remember to vote. Uh, voting is open until tomorrow, 4 o'clock. Please be sure to put in your vote 
by then and we'll be announcing the winning team during the celebration dinner tomorrow. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, our distinguished guests. Have a restful evening, but please pass by the atrium before you leave. Thank you very much.